We're gonna be welding a six inch schedule 10 stainless steel. And uh, the gap that I'm using today is a 3 16th, but I have a reason for that. If you guys welded stainless steel before, you know when you come from the bottom to the top, the gap shuts, especially if you're using a 5 32nd, it's about an eighth, sometimes a 16th that you're not fast enough. So what I do in my method is I use a 3 16th spacer to give me the gap on top. That's what I'm gonna attack. Then I take the 316 wire out and I use a 5 32nd spacer to kind of give it a little tilt. That way my bottom is not so big and when I weld it to the top, my top closes to about a 5 32nd or a little bigger than an eighth. That way it's not shut and that I can actually help some of you guys that are learning how to weld stainless out of bad situations. So another thing that I want to say though is make sure if you're testing with this, and you're gonna try this method, make sure the QC is okay with it. Don't just go put a big gap if they want a 532nd. I always ask the QC what they want. I'm gonna tack it with bridge tacks at nine, three, and also 12. I'm gonna leave the bottom open. That way I can just start welding, no time wasted, so. All right guys, so here I'm gonna bridge tack it, like I said. I'm gonna try to stay inside the bell as much as I can. I'm not trying to get sugar in that root. So I drop a ball on top. Drop a ball on the bottom, then I connect it. All right guys, so if you see, I tacked the top right here with a bridge tack. I still have my 3 16 spacer in there. So this 5 32nd is still gonna be uh, moving around a lot. So now, like I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this gap right out. You're gonna have to refit the pipe here after this. See how my gap closed? I'm gonna throw my 5 32nd wire in there and that's gonna give me the gap that I want on the bottom. So if you can see it, it opens up to about 316 on that side. But you wanna play with it. If you can see it's a little open on that side, a little closed on that side. So let's adjust it. Like I said, refit that pipe. Make sure that it's perfect. Also check the high-low again. Make sure that is good. If you're taking this for a test, you wanna make sure that it's perfect. Just a little more. And that's it. So let's put this 532nd wire back in there. Close her up a little bit. And I'm gonna tack the sides. That'll give me a true gap right there. So I light up, I drop a little ball there. Light up, drop a little ball. Now here's where I, I do what I do. I take the arc away, feed wire, take the arc away, feed wire, take the arc away, feed wire. This allows me to freeze that puddle so I don't drop the tack. Cool it out. Now that right there should help some of you guys out if you don't know how to bridge tack this thing. All right guys, so I got it all tacked up at nine, 12 and three. So now we're purging it. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, why aren't we using purging tape? But in reality, most testing labs are gonna use uh, masking tape. And sometimes more likely in the field, you're gonna be using masking tape. Now, what I look for is I lick my knuckle and I look for any leaks, any type of leaks. That's gonna kill my purge, all right? But I do have an opening right here, if you can see that opening. That's so that pressure doesn't build up in the pipe. And I'm gonna just let it purge about 15, 20 seconds. Like I said, I lick my knuckle. I can feel it about six inches. So I'm pretty sure I got a good purge in there. All right, guys, so the best thing you can do for yourself when welding stainless is to start on your bigger side. So whether that be on this side or this side. Luckily for me, my gap, my bigger gap is on my hard side. So you guys are gonna get to see that. But real quick, um, one of my good buddy Shine showed me to put tape over here while you have the root exposed. That way it kind of focuses your purge up on that weld rather than still having it blow out. So appreciate that, man. Starting about 60 amps, 55 to 65 amps. It's about where I like to do it. When I start off my first connection, I do a back feed. After that, a keyhole dip, keyhole dip, all the way up. Now what I'm gonna try to do here is quarter it. The stainless does pull on you, crazy. That pipe will move all day. So try to go quick, but take your time. Like I'm saying, a keyhole dip. Make me a keyhole, fill it right back up. Keep that wire in that pipe because that wire could oxidize. 
throwing trash into your world. Whenever you feel uncomfortable or run out of rods, stop. Don't keep going. All right, guys, so I just feathered a tack here. And what I want to make sure that you guys do is burn out that fish eye. If you got a fish eye, when you popped off, you need to get that out of there. Or when you tie into it, it's just going to stay there and it will feel x-ray. So make sure you, when you grind it, look at it. Make sure you got that pinhole out of there and keep on rolling. After that, I'm going to repurge it. Take the, the, the block off the top. Repurge it for about 10, another 15 seconds until I feel a good, strong purge up here of my hole. So let's go ahead and wait for that. All right, guys, so here it is. Lighting up my tie-in. Make sure you start behind it. Let it warm up. That way it keyholes and you can see it just like that. Boom, add my wire. Right here, I'm just back feeding. Once I re uh, get myself back to normal, I'm gonna go ahead and dip it, keyhole dip. I also like this because I can see the walls being broken down. But you gotta make sure that you're pushing wire in there. You don't want a flat root. Some people like to flush the pipe with just the root. And that's okay. But I'm showing you guys how to take your time and do this the way I do it. So like I said, if it gets too wide on you, back feed it. If you can still dip it, dip it. I prefer that the whole way. Here I'm going to go all the way to that tack. It will help hold it and open the other side right here. Alright guys, so I'm starting over here on this other side. Same rules apply when you feather out your tack. Watch it till the keyhole. Still using my dip keyhole method here. Make sure you're feeding wire. Getting that penetration in there. Try your best to go ahead and quarter that pipe. Or if you're testing and get uncomfortable, stop. So the experienced guys, quarter that. If you are going to stop, stay on it. It will move on you. Whenever you're keyholing and dipping, try not to go way too far out the bevel. It'll look inconsistent. QCs are always looking for consistency. And obviously you can see that I do freehand it. So you can walk the cup. Walk the cup. So here I'm getting uncomfortable. Go ahead and stop. You can see here, I got a kind of a tighter gap, but I'm gonna open it up with that arc. So I'm not too worried about it. Feeding the wire from the top, but I'm still dipping and keyholing. You see, I can open up the bevel just with the arc. Takes practice, but doing this method, you can get nice dimes in your root. Looks pretty sick. So like I said, try to go all the way up to my tack. As close as I can to it, it's good enough for me. All right guys, so I'm gonna cut the tack off and feather my edge, and I'm gonna try to go as far as I can to the top. So before I do that, after I'm done grinding this tack off, I'm gonna use my um, flap disc to clean it up because you don't want to leave grinding marks outside of the bevel it just looks bad so let's do that all right guys so i cut off my tack and feathered my stop so i got my flap disc i'm gonna clean up the outside take all those grinding marks off so you see my gap up on top stayed nice and the right size for my wire so hopefully what i showed you guys about the spacing really makes a difference in your weld i also do this in the field Actually up on top, you don't need to back feed it as much. You can actually get penetration from face feeding it too. So just to show you guys, I'm going to face feed it here. Trying to go all the way up to 12 o'clock here.
my rod's getting pretty small, so I'm not gonna make it. That's how I remember that gap does get a little tight on you on the top or on the bottom. You can still face you, you get penetration. Especially up on top. Because gravity's gonna help you out with that. So remember, open up that uh, bevel with the arc. Right here, my rod is getting pretty small. I try to make it. It's very hot on my hand here. So I'm going to go ahead and see what we can do. Right here. Alright guys, so if you take a look here, I'm getting ready to close it. But what you got to do from here is turn your purge down, all right? So I, I originally said I could feel my uh, purge about six inches. So I lick my knuckle. I feel it maybe about two, about two, three inches now. It's not as strong, all right? And if you've been uh, doing what I said up to this point, you've been blocking this every time you're putting in your root, what I suggest is as you're closing it up, leave this open. Because if you close it and you, clo and you close the root, It'll be like a pressure bottle and it'll just push your root out and that's not what you want. Another thing too is whenever you pop off or terminate your weld, you don't just want to flick off. That will give you an instant keyhole and that right there fails tests and x-rays. So what you're going to do is weld normally, dip, keyhole, dip, tighten it in. Once you tie it in, trail your arc, meaning as I get to the to the to my stop and I close it, I lift my arc and let it run off by itself. I don't just pop off as I normally would. Stainless steel is very delicate. So again, I'm gonna do my root just as normal. Dip, keyhole, dip, keyhole, dip, keyhole. And when, I gonna, when I'm gonna stop, after I filled it in, I'm still gonna keep going, keep going. Once I get up here where there's plenty of metal, that's when I trail my arc off like this and then snap off, I'm telling you. You'll get a fish out every time you just pop off. Instant test failure. So. All right, guys. I'm nearing my tie-in. Take your time on this tie-in right here. Let it fill up by itself. Add wire. There it goes. Keep it going. Like I said. I'm about to pop off, I don't just flick off. I'm trailing my arc, just like that. All right guys, so I'm fixing to just brush out some of that color. And uh, if I have to, I'll grind down some high spots out of my root, but make sure that you brush it with a stainless steel only brush. If you use a carbon brush or a wire wheel, it could embed itself in that stainless and it'll rust. That is a no-no on any job. In the testing lab, it doesn't matter because they're just going to cut it anyways. But for future references, if you guys didn't know, that's stainless steel only. So don't use a wire wheel and don't use a carbon brush. All right, guys, so I let my pipe cool down to the touch. That's what I like to do. I know sometimes in the testing lab, it's, it's timed. If it is timed, in that case, I would suggest trying to flush it out with the root. That way you can kind of cheat it and show them that you flushed it. But if not, let it cool it da cool down to the touch, just like I did. And I'm fixing to start uh, the root uh, hot pass. Same amp, 62 amps, just like I did the root. 60 to 65 amps, sometimes even 55 to 65 amps. So here goes the hot pass. I'm going to freehand it. Let's do that. I prefer to freehand it. I feel like it's faster. I'm trying to go all the way to the top. Keep that wire connected. It's very easy to suck back that root. Now again, if you feel uncomfortable, stop. But the same rule applies 
when you stop you cannot just pop off make sure you trail your arc out it is possible to get a fish eye even from the hot pass just like it's possible to suck it all back take your time I, I suggest keeping the wire up on top that's what I normally do well in 6G whether it be carbon or stainless just keep the wire on top helps prevent undercut as well Freehand. Not as smooth as walking the cup, but it's there. All right, there you have it, well tube, a six inch schedule 10 stainless steel using 316 filler wire. That's my take on it. I hope that what I did today helps you. Also, if you need help on that two inch schedule 10, I do have another video on that. So go ahead and use both of these as tutorials. And it's good to be back guys. You're gonna definitely see more of me. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Boom. Thank you.